Greetings. Hello, my name is Kwaje Donnell. Hi, I'm Sally Steinwatz. And this is my piece, and this is my artwork. Bookends. Church and the Checkerboard Moment. Hi, my name is Liz Morgan, and I'm a ceramicist. I turn this into this. My artwork is often inspired by my environment. I currently am in a train station. Uh, this once was the depot where you could jump on the train and take it from one location to another. It is no longer a passenger train, but the door to my studio is about 10 feet from the train tracks themselves. So when the train comes by, there is graffiti or street art on the train. But as close as I am to it, it gets very blurry when it passes by. This piece in particular was inspired by that blurry vision of different colors melting together as the locomotive passes by my window. This glaze is called Lustrous Jade. I then add a few detail glazes to it that allow the drippiness to form. I use a copper infused underglaze to do the black detail on the inside as well. Hello, my name is Erica, and this is my picture that I made. It's called Self Portrait Holding Own Spine. And the reason it's called that is because it's based on a dream that I had that I reached into my body and pulled out my own spine one night. and. It was part of this process for me to turn into a candle and there was no fear um, that came with this dream. It was just time for me to become a candle. And so I woke up and it was sort of a, sort of a cool dream and so I decided that I would try to represent it um, through a paper mosaic or you could call it a collage or an assemblage. I just cut up little pieces of National Geographic magazines. Um, and try to create, make them into something else. And it gives you a chance to say that you don't have to take the world as you find it. Like you can find these things that were cast off and you can transform them into something that you're trying to make into something beautiful. And so I guess that would be um, me, my philosophy. Hi, my name's Dan Skelly. Hello, my name is Joan Nichols. Hi, I'm Hannah Eaton, the director of Rochester Artists Collaborative and local artist in Rochester, New York. And this is my piece called Grieving in Red. Hi there, my name is Alexia Sonne, and this is my painting, uh, The Self Portrait. I wanted it to have a little bit of a surreal kind of feel. Do you see this past year we've all been stuck in our houses, so. This is me kind of meditating, sitting on the couch, dreaming of being somewhere else. Um, I like the idea of the moments of, I call them in-between moments. Um, the moments in between we all experience of being alone or self-reflective. And I feel like it's in those moments of being alone that we can truly feel connected because we all feel that way. I went through this period during COVID where um, I was having trouble creating or, or being motivated. I went through a series of uh, exercises where I would try to do a painting in five minutes um, just to kind of capture that moment, the here and now kind of a thing. Um, and that kind of healed me a little bit, it motivated me to move on maybe to something uh, that took a little longer, something that was a little more expansive. It's important for an artist to push yourself, regardless of whether you're having positive or negative thoughts, and try to channel either or, either or into some kind of a work. But to keep on working, keep moving forward, I think, that, I think that's important. When you look at the folklore of daisies, it is all about new beginnings, hope, innocence, and actually good luck. And it all stems from the uh, folklore of mother and child from the late 1800s. Also, if you look at this, you can see in the white stripes, I chose to use the colors of the rainbow. And I did that on purpose to show that everything, everyone should be loved. 
And so this is all about inclusion. Hi, I'm Sally Steinwatz, and this is my work, and I titled it COVID Trained. And the beginning of COVID for me, which was back in late February, early March, one day I just had this vision of a train, and it's not an unusual vision when you think about it, but here we are, we're on this train, and we're entering a tunnel, and there is light on the other side, but we don't know how long it is. We don't know the distance. Hi, my name is Ray Wiggins, and I made the artwork Reaching for Hire. It's an oil painting that I did based off of my own bodily reflections on my faith and how I view hope and just how the whole year really just transformed my overall thinking and concepts behind what my ideas of believing and believing in the things that fortify me to push forward. And it mostly is just about letting go of those expectations that you had on yourself once and allowing new growth to come in and fortify you in a way that you never really experienced. Hello, I'm Karen Staples, and this is A Piece of Peace. My name is Dan Hogan, I'm an abstract artist. My name is Max Irwin. Sometimes people call me Max Levin, I'm Irwin, and I'm presenting my work, Dinner in Our Arms. My name is LaVon Shepard, and this is my painting of Rochester Contemporary, of where I was commissioned. And, uh, and I know I've, I've, I've always been interested in reflections, any kind of reflective surface. I've been working on that for many years, even as an undergraduate student at RIT. I did a lot of images that dealt with reflective surfaces. And, uh, and so as I was walking around and looking at the environment, I kept seeing all of these windows and seeing different things reflected environmentally in, in the windows themselves, and even, even in the cars and, 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 the, and the other elements that was around that had a shiny surface. And I began to think about creating something that was sort of a blend of the totality of all of these reflections. I'm most, mostly an intuitive painter, but once in a while I get my rational mind in. And when the rational mind came in, was I said, it needs something. I didn't have these, this, these, these white things here. I just had the, the other stuff. I was hanging on the wall, and I said, in my bedroom. And I said, just go grab some house paint, put it in your hand. I just poured it in my hand, took this out on the front wall, and the neighbors probably thought I was crazy, and just threw it. So this paint went flying. So basically, for this painting, I did whatever it took. The kind of an intersection between the craft and the art and, uh, and this kind of usable object. I also kind of feel that they're a bit absurd, and I like the idea of absurdity in physical art, and the kind of relationship between what we take seriously as a, as a thing that you produce in a factory versus what you can make by yourself in a workshop and then, and then use that as, as a gag or as a, as a fun piece. Um, and I think this plays on that a little bit because, you know, they're wooden knives and they're not, uh, they're not very threatening. Dakota Tomb, and this is my piece entitled Elisa. Hello there, my name is David Burke. Um, this is my painting. Hi, my name is Jean Chile, and I'd like to talk to you about my painting, The Flow Within. Hi, my name is Rebecca Lefebvre. It's good to be here today. Um, this is my artwork. It's an encaustic study. It's just called Study with Red. 
The last few years, I started uh, painting people, which I was always kind of afraid to do when I was younger. But uh, I really had a lot of practice the last few years painting people, and I, it's so much fun. I love painting people. They're just there's just so much diversity. <laughs> there's just so much that you can, even from a photo, you know, that you can get from. And painting it makes me feel like more, a lot more in touch with it, with the person themselves. I heard a writer say that he called himself a stalagmite writer because when you're in a cave and you see those really cool stalactites and stalagmites, those formations that come up and down, they're made drip by drip by drip over years and years and years, one little drop at a time. And that if we stick at something and we just do it one little drop at a time, we eventually have something really amazing. And that great things aren't necessarily built in, in huge blasts, but they're built with slow, steady determination over a course of time. And that's just kind of where I'm at in my life right now. Hi guys, this is Amy Moore. Hey, my name is Kaiser. Hi, my name is Sandy Frankel. My name is Richmond Butch. This is my painting title, Fate. Obviously, as everyone knows, 2020 is just a wild year. A lot happened, even more so than just the reproductive rights that I'm covering in this piece. But it left me just feeling kind of at a loss for words and really needing that creative outlet to communicate what I was experiencing and being able to hopefully speak to others um, and incite some change that we still need to have happen. This particular image is, is a uh photograph of one of the young pastors in Rochester. And I, I felt very strongly that um, seeing these young pastors out there fighting the fight along with the rest of us to uh, get justice. Because right now we just have no justice and I feel very strongly that this fight will go on and on to the next generation, to the next generation, to the next generation, where we don't need to fight every day. Just, get, just to be able to be treated like human beings. So I thank you for allowing me to uh, show this image in this group. I chose this picture for this exhibit during the time of COVID because the world and the, and the uh, country has been in such turmoil, both because of the virus and because of political unrest and, and racism. And I thought this is something that helps give a moment of reflection, a moment of comfort um, and beauty that we all need um, to counterbalance what we're experiencing during this time. Hi, my name is Terry Subrak and I'm the artist of this piece right here of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Hi, I'm Wells. Uh, I'm a 20-year-old art student from Smith College, and this is my piece, Medusa. My name is James Wiley, and this is my artwork, Church in the Checkerboard Mountains. Hello, my name is Sethia Jackson, and this is my artwork, The Andean Woman. Hi, I'm Josh Owen. This is a project that I worked on with the famous Wendell Castle, who was also a teacher at the Rochester Institute of Technology. The project is called Bookends. Uh, basically, I was at work one day and this guy came in and he has a daughter my age, which I know that's never a great way to start a story and it wasn't a great one, but basically he, to my boss indirectly about me, was like, oh, they're pretty cute. And I was um, very mad <laughs> about it. It just made me feel gross, drove home, just angry and angry and angry. And I really just felt this like rage being perceived <laughs> in a way that I didn't like. And so I kind of wanted to, I don't know, I just was like expressing it completely. And I was in my basement, just taking pictures of myself, making terrifying faces, really trying to say like, oh, am I fucking cute now? <laughs> like. And uh, the first sketch I did, not great, second sketch, loved it. And I was like, this needs to be brighter and louder and more obnoxious. I felt like naming this piece Medusa really played into the themes of being perceived and weaponizing, weaponizing being perceived. 
because Medusa, as a creature, turns men's gazes against them. Uh, this piece is inspired by my trip to Lima, Peru. I visited a museum that was called the Mates Museum and was founded by Mario Testino, fashion photographer. He had this piece of an Andean woman, I believe in a Cusco village. And what really stood out to me was the traditional clothing of the Andean woman. And just her, the look in her face, look of confidence and just um, secureness. Greetings, my name is Harold Taddy. Hello, my name is Jeff Lennox. Hi, I'm Stephanie Polo. I am Bill Stevens. Uh, this is my painting right here called uh, Departing, Coming Home. And the whole point of this piece is to capture the feel. This is called, uh, I think it's Magnolia, it's Magnolia's, at H it's a basically Magnolia's from Highland Park is the inspiration. And the whole idea is to capture the feel of as you move through space and landscapes. One of my interests in preserving the art of painting is that I think that if you study painting and you look at paintings and you love paintings, you're participating in a long conversation between and among artists and painters. And, uh, as you know, if you walk in on a conversation among your friends and you hear a little bit of it and you try to put something in, if, if you put something in that they've already talked about, they're bored with it, they don't want to hear about it, it really behooves us to look at what has been done and said, said through painting, said through sculpture, said through installation so that we know what we're commenting on and what we're saying. The work contains a lot of symbolism that seems to come about through this process of layering the paint down without much intention of what I'm going to do with it. I never know completely what I'm going to do until it presents itself to me. So that's why uh, I find this painting process such a mystery. And um, it's ongoing. My name is Anne McKenna, and this is my piece. It's a still life in acrylics on linen. Hi, I'm Brad Van Aken, and thanks for having me talk about my painting. This is um, Abstract 777. Hello, my name is Kwa J. Donhill, uh, and this is my piece, Enough. My name is Philip Bliss, and this is my painting, the title of which is A Passage of Life. I'm Paul Dodd, and this is my artwork. It's a uh, collection of photos that I took in Spain. People that may have known me in the past m may know that I was a commercial illustrator, a lot of conceptual illustrations for magazines and uh, books and things like that. And uh, from there I evolved into plein air painting, which I love to do and I wish I could still do it, but I developed a difficult to diagnose back problem. As a part of my recovery, I, I continued to do art. I, I, I got the markers out, uh, full range of colors, and uh, began doing little abstractions out of my head. I, I want to be a um, encouragement for anyone who has a disability that they can keep going. With whatever, you know, for me, I, I came from a creative family and, and being creative is what works for me. But uh, just, you gotta keep going. That's all I have to say. <laughs> if two years ago someone had told me that they were gonna do this cool performance art piece where a bunch of artists were gonna get together to talk and it was gonna be about um, our social interactions and our need for each other and we were gonna stand in front of a room and instead of inviting people, we were going to tell them not to come. And we were going to put masks on to cover our faces, like our main means of understanding each other. I would have thought, like, that is such a cool idea. I love that. But living that this year has not really been the best experience. 
And I'm really grateful to Blue and the people at Roco for putting something together here, despite the weird environment that we all find ourselves in right now. I believe that one of the reasons that we have, as a community, been able to get through these rough times is because of local artists and um, seeing art and viewing art and places like um, the Rochester Contemporary Art Center who have had virtual sessions and even moments where you can go into the gallery to see art. Art makes us happy, art makes us feel comforted during times of distress. Artists make art because their past journey was not yet completed. They are true time travelers, constantly searching and trying to get home dwelling in the deep spaces within, searching for answers. Artists can guide us and give us a glimpse 